Hi everyone. I am here. We're going to make our rag quilt today. I'm really excited. Um, quickly, I'm just going to do my shares. I know I'm running a few minutes behind, but um, that happens. I'm just trying to get everything ready. And I kind of did. <laughs> um, so just let me quickly share this video and then we'll get started. Um, let's see. Make sure you check in with me when you get here. Let me know where you're at um, and how you're doing. Come on. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Sorry, guys, just getting this shared. Um, hi, Laura. That one's good. Hi, Wendy. Eek. Don't do that. There we go. Um, I hope everyone had a really great weekend. Um, it was my birthday yesterday, so that was fun. We went to brunch, which was really nice. Um, and it was really fun. On time. So I'm quickly sharing this and then we'll be done. If you are um, not watching live, if you're watching later, go ahead and just skip right through this part. Unfortunately, lots of you are watching live because <laughs> I just started. It's just happening now. Um, and then you can skip this part though if you're not watching live. And then I recommend you share this so you can come back later and then skip this part. <laughs> um, I'm almost done. I've just got two more and I'll be done. Um, I'm really excited. Today we're working with my favorite fabric. I work with a lot of fabric, but this has always been my favorite. And if you have followed the blog for any time, you know that this is one of the fabrics I use regularly all the time. So, um, Full disclosure, they did send me this fabric to work with that we're working with today. Um, and that's, but that's the extent of, of it. They, they've sent it to me and that's it. They didn't dictate to me what to use it for or anything. Um, this is all my own ideas and opinions. So just so you know, they did send me the fabric. Okay, I am ready to go. So let me just check in with you guys and say hi. Lots of people here today. Um, good morning, Jennifer. Hi, Donna. Dentist's office, boo! <laughs> I hope it goes all right. Uh, Jennifer, another Jennifer. Happy Monday. Hi, Paula, Lori, Priscilla, Donna. Um, hi, Sherry and Nordine, Margaret. Oh my gosh, 82. I'm freezing here, guys. It's cold. Oh, the Netherlands. I have a good friend who lived in California with me and then she just moved back to the Netherlands, so. Um, I would really love to go visit. Hi, Brooke, um, Carol, Lori, everybody. Thank you for saying happy birthday. My son went around telling everybody that um, that I was 24 all day, so that's adorable. And he was like adamant, and he was angry at people if they disagreed with him. So I'm obviously not 24. Um, so it was cute. <laughs> so okay, let's get started. So we're using our art gallery fabrics today, and I am currently updating my phone. Um, and the app is updating, so hopefully when we get started again, it won't be on the computer because I know the computer is a little bit, the quality is not great, and it's not um, the smoothest thing to watch. Thank you, Tanya. But um, that's what we're working with today until my phone. Hopefully my phone and the app will update, and then it'll work better. So we're using our Art Gallery Fabrics, and I'm just going to show you. This is the Love Story Collection from um, Maureen Cracknell. It is so stinking cute and I love it. This is why there's a few prints that have hearts, um, but not, but really maybe two that look lovey. So if you're not um, a heart person, you could just leave those two out. Look at this one. This one's my favorite. Love it. Um, and so what I've done is, I'm going to show you how I cut them. So I have two that I left to cut, but what I've used is 10 fat quarters. Okay, so this is a relatively cheap, um, 
relatively cheap quilt to make too because 10 fat quarters is really, I mean, that's not that much yardage in the, in quilt land. Um, and this is going to be about a lap quilt size. Um, I'm just showing you all the different prints because I just think they're all so pretty. So here's one more that has, I mean, hearts, but just, they're not super, like, not too much heart. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of, like, all things hearts, but, um, this one is really pretty. It's like a really, oh, it's like a lacy one. <laughs> hi, Elaine. Um, hi, Deanna. How are you? And then there's this one, too, which is really fun. So there's lots of, um, it is not flannel. Nope. This is just cotton. So the description says a cheater rag quilt. We're not doing it's not really anything like a rag quilt. It's kind of, it has that rag quilt vibe, but it's not exactly, I mean, I'm not using any rag quilt rules. So just throw that out of your head that it's a rag quilt because it's not. So <laughs> um, it's just similar and it has a similar look. And I don't, I kind of am a cotton girl. I almost always use cotton. So um, I'm just going to scoop that. So let me come back real quick. 10 fat quarters. Okay, here's two more that I haven't cut yet, but I'll show you the print. Um, it's really pretty. I really like this one. And then there's this one as well. <clears throat> That's also, I love a floral. And the floral with that like Aztec tribal print. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm excited. So, okay, let me just, so I need 10 fat quarters and I'm cutting them into nine inch squares. If you had more yardage and wanted to make it bigger, you could do like a 12 inch square. Um, the less work, the better in my mind. Um, but a fat quarter perfectly folds and makes four nine inch squares. So that's why I'm doing nine inch squares because um, I like to work with fat quarters and it easily cuts into a nine inch square. Then I have two of these, my fusible fleece. This comes in yardage too. I just don't happen to have any. So if you get it in yardage, um, I just think you'd need 45 inches. So about a yard and a half. I would get a yard and a half. Um, in the yardage for two packages of this fusible fleece, okay? Um, and so then I'm going to show you how I cut it. Let me just scoot my cutting board here so you can see it a little bit better. And we have really very little waste for this one as well. So that's nice. Okay, so the other thing that is makes it... Um, that I wanted to mention, you can use a pre-cut, um, like a layer cake. Art Gallery doesn't do those, that, which is why I'm cutting this. Um, and it's nice because it's got the sheared edges already. But um, you could also use your pinking shears if you want a sheared edge. I'm not doing a sheared edge just because I kind of, I'm fine with having a little bit of, um, guys, the word, it's gone. I'm fine with it um, fraying a little bit, but you could do a sheared edge. That would be, I, you would do the very similar, just use your shears to cut it, or just use a pre-cut that comes with the 10-inch squares, and then you'd be using a 10-inch square. So we really don't have very much waste, though. This is all the waste I've got for the whole thing, minus these two. So it's really, I mean, it's a very efficient um, quilt. So let's just, I'll show you how I'm cutting this. So I've already ironed them, pressed them, so they're nice and flat. And then I'm going to take it. Um, good morning, Marina. Good morning, Gina. Sorry if I missed you guys. I'm jabbering. And then I'm just going to fold it in half this way and just line the edges up as best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just as best you can get. And then fold it in half again. And then try and just get get it all flattened out right like that so this is what it should look like you can fold it in half the other way first and then this way as long as you just fold it in force um, just like this then um, good morning Karen Alabama sunny sunny okay so then what we're gonna do is I like this mat because it's got my lines already on it and I know from here to here this is nine inches so I'm gonna line it up and I'm gonna try and have just a little bit of excess over each of those lines that I just pointed to. So here is my nine inch, so I just have a little bit over, and here's my nine inch, and I have some over that. As long as I have some over both sides, I'm fine. And I'm gonna, as well as I can, use this top edge as my straight edge. Um, also not crucial, because we're gonna cut that off. 
so I just don't want it to be really, like, don't do it like this, super wonky. Line it up as close as you can to that, um, making that your straight edge. Then I'm going to use my ruler. And there's a couple ways you could do this. I, it would be really, this is one of those moments when it would be really nice to have one of those rotary, um, not rotary, those lazy Susan, um, cutting mats because you could just doot, 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 and that would be really awesome, but this isn't that. So I'm just lining up, um, and if you, so I've had lots of requests for how to do rotary cutting. So I'm just taking my ruler and I'm, um, let's see, I'm lining it up with these, the lines on this mat, these lines here. I'm lining my ruler up so that the inch mark matches those on those lines on top and bottom. So it's straight here. It's straight here. I've got my straight, my fabric lined up straight along here. And then I'm just going to trim right like that. For this one, if you are an ambi cutter, ambidextrous, you can cut both ways. I'm just going to flip this over and I'm just doing that because I have this half inch so it wouldn't be lined up evenly if I used it like this. So that's why I'm flipping it just so that I get the straight, the one inch marks instead of the half inch marks. And if you can cut, um, if you can cut with both hands, you can just do it this way. Like so. Okay, I'll show you how to do it if you're not going to cut with both hands on the next one. And then for this, um, if you've got the salvage edge, which I do here, um, I don't want that, if you can see, there it is. I don't want that to be um, in my quilt, so I'm going to make sure that overlaps. Now I'm going to definitely line up my top here with this mark here, because this is our straight edge that we've just cut like this. Yes, you need your rotary blade to be sharp. And then this is my nine inch and then my nine inches here. So I've got plenty of fabric overlapping. You can see on either side of my fingers. Okay. Thanks, Gina. Yeah, this is my, my sewing shirt. Um, okay. So then I'm just going to cut again, again, lining this up. And usually I stand up because it helps me get some leverage, but works out all right. And like I said, see, we wanted to make sure and get that salvage edge off of there. But it really, I mean, this is not very much excess. <coughs> and then our nine inches is here. I always like to double check because I'm short term memory. <laughs> Can't remember. Okay. And then you see we've got four squares that are same or nine inch size. So we've got all four and we just did one set of cuts instead of, um, and then what I've done, so I'm putting two of these in this pile and two in this other pile because we're going to have a front and a back and they're going to be, so I want two of each fabric on the front and two on the back. They're going to be put together exactly the same. Maybe you guys can help me come up with a better name for this if you don't think it's a rag quilt, because it's not exactly a rag quilt. I've never actually done a rag quilt. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of a cotton-loving gal. So I'm just going to do the same. I'm going to fold it in quarters. And we just, the, the only spot you really want to pay lots of attention to is this corner right here, because if it's, if it's um, bulky in there, it'll kind of give you a crooked cut. So as long as everything feels nice and flat, and it's mostly um, <coughs> lined up, then we're good. Um, let me, so this is, where's my, let me find one that has it on it. All of my salvage edges don't say, oh, here we go. This is Art Gallery Fabrics Love Story from Maureen Cracknell. Her name is, is cut off. But it's C R A C K N E L L. It's super fun. I really love it. Um, I love it. <laughs> Sorry, not funny. Okay. <laughs> All right. These would be some fun to save and use for a cool zipper pouch or something. The salvage edges. Okay. So we're just gonna do the same thing, and I'll show you if you're not comfortable um, cutting both ways. What we can do. So I'm going to do the same. I'm just going to line. This is my last one for cutting and then we'll move on to sewing. I'm going to line it up along the top. Make sure I have my an overlap along both sides where I'm going to cut. 
line up my ruler using the lines on here. And there was, there's been some talk. Um, somebody once said that these aren't um, accurate, but it's exactly the same size as this ruler. So I think they're pretty accurate. Anyway, so just double check, like line up, you could just line up your ruler and see like does do all the lines match up along the whole way and they do for me so I'm fine using it as a measuring then if you so if you don't want to cut both ways just we're gonna flip it around then you're gonna use this line up your straight edge here okay perfectly and then count nine over which is right here <clears throat> and do your cut so if you're not comfortable just flipping the ruler and cutting with your other hand, which I totally get, you can do it like that. Just turn it. But just be very careful not to, um, not to move your squares because we don't want them to get messed up. I'm do the same. Cut off my salvage edge. So some of them don't have a salvage edge, and you'll have just a little bit of extra, extra waste or scrap fabric. But lots of them do and then so like I said if you're not comfortable flipping your ruler we'll just turn this around line it up and now that you have two sides I like to line up both sides and make sure both of these are straight um, and then cut I'm paranoid about cutting and not having the right size so I do a lot of counting <laughs> Sometimes I line it up and then count a third time. So, um, um, Jennifer, there are so many things that you can do with the salvage edges. They're so cute. Um, um, I'm done with this. So that's all for our ruler and our rotary cutter. And we, I mean, this is like in the scheme of things, like to get an entire lap size quilt, this is all of our scrap. So, <laughs> yeah, Deanna, you got to count. <laughs> I'm just paranoid. And the fa I love my fabric so much, I don't want to cut it wrong. And then I have to, like, trash it or find something else or just hang on to it, really. I don't, I would never trash it. I'll just hang on to it because that's what I do. So, now we should have two piles. Front pile, back pile. And um, so, there's, you know, the different, different schools. I am a wing it type of gal. But if you're not, you can take these, like take these to your living room and line them up and put them in the order you want and then start making pairs and clip, pinning them together. Sometimes too, if I'm doing that, I will also take a picture with my phone so I can remember where everything goes when I want to reline it back up. But that's not, for this one, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to wing it and... Um, so what that means is I'm going to take two pieces and sew them together, and I'm going to do that ten times for this. Um, and then once I get through my first pile, I'm going to do it again with the second pile. So really, we're just doing the same stitch over and over and over. And here's the other thing about this one. Is that normally you would put them right sides together, but we're not going to put them right sides together. We're going to put them wrong sides together. Okay. Just like this and pin if you want. Oh. You can pin if you want, but I am going to try and finish this quilt on here. So I'm going to just go and I'm just using a quarter inch. And then I'm going to grab two more and go for it. Okay. And yeah, that's. So I probably should have. The plan is to do. Um, the plan is that I will have five rows of four and that's so that's and that's 20 strip 20 squares which is what we've got so 
sets of two is fine. If you're going to do a different number, like you were going to do rows of three with a bigger square, then you wouldn't put them all together. You would put two together and leave one, put two together and leave one, if that makes sense. And I'm just kind of, once I've used one, I'm kind of putting it, the, the second one in my lap so that I don't, um, so that I have some variety. Okay. Just trying to mix them up. And like I said, you are, if you, do not, if you're not okay with winging it, go lay them all out on your, on your floor. And uh, take a look at the design that you like so you can remember. Let me see, I can show you one more time. Um, here it is. So this is Art Gallery Fabrics, and it's Love Story by Maureen Cracknell, and it, her name has been cut off. Um, okay. Thank you, Deanna. Um, <clears throat> and you guys, the, the feel, the hand of the Art Gallery is just, it really doesn't feel like any other fabric you've ever used. Deanna can tell you. It's so soft. It's just, it feels really nice. I really like it. <laughs> um. All right, so that. Now I've made it through, I've got one more for the front. For the back, it doesn't really matter. So this is the whole front. Now I'm gonna grab, and I'm still gonna just randomly put them together. Decided it wanted to do a ruffle. Hold on. The machine got all wonky. Okay, well, that's fine. I'm going to set these front pieces aside so that I don't get them mixed up. Uh, ruffle, anyone? <laughs> I don't know why my machine decided to do that. Okay. I'm just going to give that one more just to make sure. Oh, I feel like. Hold on. Just re let me just give this a re rethread real quick. It's exactly wonky. And I'm just using a white, um, which I didn't mention. I'm just using a white thread because it kind of goes with everything. And it's stop showing me your comments, so I'm gonna try and remember to scroll through them. It likes to do that to me every so often. It's just stop talking. Um, okay. I think it's just really loud because you're right next to it, <laughs> the speaker. Um, it's a really old, just basic brother. Okay, so we're just putting two 
putting them together right sides out. You can uh, turn it down when I'm <laughs> sewing because I'm not doing a ton of talking. <laughs> push that to the side. Um, Tanya, I don't store them well. That's, uh, that's the thing. <laughs> I kind of jumped in with both feet when we moved and I didn't set up a good system. So I'm going to work on it. That's my plan. Um, that's a good idea, Deanna. Comic book boards. I, I don't have a good system right now. So then, um, I, <clears throat> I'm just going to take this is my front pieces. I'm just gonna pull them apart. Oh, I have some more that were a little bit. Probably should have rethreaded sooner because these are all ruffled. Decided to be a little wonky. But we fixed the threading, so it's all right. Sometimes. Back over a couple of them. Okay, this one went right. Well, this one's fine. Let me just give this one one more go over. And this one too. I didn't notice I was making a ruffle. Okay, so these two, this is the back. I'm going to move those away again. So I like to keep, just keep your front and back separate so you don't get them mixed up. Okay, then next step, we still don't have to, um, we still don't have to press yet. First, I'm going to, now I'm just going to take my sets of two and make them a set of four. Like I said, we're looking for five sets of four. So this, we'll do this and then then we'll press. Okay, so we're not, yeah, not ruffling. Okay. Okay. And I'm just making sure that I'm not using the same two fabrics. So these are fine. And I'm going to go this way because I don't want those two pinks right next to each other. And when I get to the last couple, I'm just going to lay them out to make sure I'm not using the same one um, twice. So I feel like, why do I feel like, oh, because there's one here. <laughs> I was like, wait, I'm missing, no, I am missing one. I did my math, right? <laughs> I don't know. I'm missing something here. All right. Ten. 
10 back quarters. Four pieces is 40. Five rows of four is 20. I should be good. Why am I not good? Maybe I've got some mixed into the back section. Let's count all we've got here. Trying to count and talk at the same time is probably my problem. So, oh, see, knew it. There it is. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not, I'm off somewhere. Okay, let me fix this one real quick because it's, it got ruffled too. Okay, now I'm going to attach it to my last one here. And then I'm going to check your guys' comments. Susan. Hi, Judy. Um, you, I hope you have a wonderful Christmas too, Patty. Um, thanks, Tanya. Gina, thank you guys for sharing. I love when you share because then your friends can find us. And then you can find it later too, which is nice. Um, so that's always good. Okay, so this is my front. I'll show you. We've got four. We've got sections of four. And we've got five rows. Of that so I'm just gonna separate these and lay them out and I might do a little planning ahead to make sure that I don't have anything super close to its matching square So I'm just laying them all out. Let's heat up our iron. I'm gonna let my iron heat up while I quickly throw these two together. I mean, these pieces of two. Okay, so we've got, this is our back or front, it doesn't really matter. We've got one section that's in rows of four, we've got the one section that's twos, and we're going to throw those together really quick. And I'm not even worrying about the direction of the fat of the pattern. Some of the patterns are super directional. I'm just kind of going with it. These two are good. Should be hot. Just make sure here. Um, yeah. Um, it is because I'm on my computer, guys. I'm sorry. My phone is updating, hopefully, so that I can do. Um, and it doesn't like the fast movements. 
of the sewing machine. So maybe it'll, hopefully it will um, get a little less pixely. Um, and next time I go live, I'm going to try my phone again. It was so nice on my phone. I wish that it worked better. And um, so I'm just going to iron. I'm not going to press this anywhere. I'm just going to leave it up. I'm just going up against it on either side to make sure that it's, I've got it flattened out um, so that the seam, I'm fine with it sticking up. I like that actually. So it might be, hopefully it gets a little better now that I'm, um, has it gotten any better? Can you guys see? <laughs> Sorry. I wish I could do it a different way. Super frustrating that it's so glitchy on the phone because that works so much better. But I don't know, just watching them lately, I, I feel like I can't even click on to a vi live video without, like, I, if I turn the sound on, it gets all wonky. Like, I just really wish they would fix the live video app, like, features. I'm going to move this so that I can have some more room. Okay. Yeah, I think it was just the the fast, like when I go like this, I can see it skip like on my end. So <laughs> I know that it's, I think just the sewing was um, a little too fast. So I'm just kind of barely like, not really pulling, just holding the seam flat while I press. And like I said, there's going to be some fraying which we know you can go back through when when you're done with your pinking shears or you can pink, use your pinking shears to start with um so i've just pressed so that my seams um kind of stick out let me see kind of like it's hard to show you you can kind of see how they stick out i'll hold it still for a minute so it will correct and you see we've got some fraying which i'm fine with um the stitching will stop it when it gets that far, if it gets that far. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to press again. Try and do it quick. We've got a lot of pressing to do. And these rows are so pretty. I like this quilt for when you have a fabric that is just so pretty that you don't really want to make it cut it too small. If you like, because you really like the print, like, I like this for that. Um, so that we can, we just get so much pattern and print. I like it. It's not broken up. I mean, those are really fun quilts too, but sometimes it's fun to just really showcase the print. The different prints. So this is kind of just a quick process of just flattening out up to the seam, but not necessarily pressing the seam to a side. Okay. Just got two more on the back or the front. It really doesn't matter. And I'm definitely going to go, so my shears are just really, um, dull. So I'm just going to go, I know you can get them sharpened, but I'll probably just go get a new pair so that I can finish these edges with a shear. So I definitely recommend either shearing it first or finishing it off with a shear at the end. Pinking shear. Okay, one more. And then I'm going to check comments because Facebook doesn't like to show me because it's glitchy. It's frustrating.
Okay, so that's all of our front pieces. We'll do the same exact thing on our back pieces. But I'll show you what. Um, so for this part, I will do just a little bit of planning. Um, um, well, Deanna, the phone is better. The phone is better, but it's super glitchy and it oftentimes cuts me off um, in the middle of my video, which is really frustrating. So the computer doesn't stream as well, but it is reliable. So I'm gonna just do a little planning. That one won't go there. This one will go here. I'm just gonna line them up to make sure I'm not, like, I don't have anything, like, touching. So that's fine there. And then, or too close to each other like that okay so then all I'm gonna do so I've got them in the order I want them in so I will pin these so I'm gonna take my two these two strips and all we're gonna do is line up just start here and I'm just gonna line up these seams and you can kind of open the seam a little bit on each side. Just hold it open and then put the four together, right like that. And then just cut it. So, but I'm, I am hoping that now the phone, like I'm installing the update, which I always avoid doing, <laughs> but I'm installing the update and my app just updated. So I'm hopeful that maybe they fixed the glitch when they updated the app. And we all have our fingers crossed for that. So I'm just kind of opening up the seams just a little bit and then mushing them together and then clipping like so. And then I'll do that again on this last one. Ugh, maybe, come on. Open up, open up, there we go. And open this one. This one really doesn't want to do it <laughs> for some reason. Okay, whatever, fine, don't do it. All right, so I just clipped the seams in place and then it, I mean, unless something's gone horribly wrong, it should all just line up. So it lines up everywhere else as well. Um, I'm just gonna stick a pin in the edges, just to hold those two edges together. I was hoping we could finish, but I feel like this video is gonna be forever if I try and finish both sides. <laughs> so let's see. Now I'm gonna put these two together the same way. And then we'll have one left over that we'll have to throw on at the end. So, just gonna, I'm not gonna be as particular, I guess. I'm just gonna clip those things together, right here, and right here, and right here. Um, I'm not, I'm ironing on top of a, towel so it's not ruining my mat um thanks Deanna um yes I'm going to take some time off um yes Gertrude thank you I don't know what I'm doing I'm glad you said something because I totally would have sewn them and been really annoyed um <laughs> Gertrude's right I can't talk and do these things at the same time Gertrude is totally right we're gonna iron we're gonna pin wrong sides together. That's because that's the look of our quilt. Thank you, Gertrude. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Let's start fresh here. Um, so. One more time. <clears throat> so 
So, but I still want to kind of have my seams open a little bit, if you can see, right like that. Um, for when we sew it together. So yes, you guys saved me. I appreciate it. <laughs> Save me from some heartache and pain um, of seam ripping. Can somebody just sit here and sew with me all the time so I don't make silly mistakes? That would be nice. Um, Um, I don't know if I finished my sentence. I'm going to take, this is my last live video until the new year. So I'm going to take just a little bit of time and hang out with my kiddos and I've got family coming into town and maybe I'll clean my craft room. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> but that's the plan anyways. Okay. So I'm going to leave this, this one will go aside. Bring back our sewing machine. Oh, okay. And then I'm just gonna, sorry, it's gonna probably get pixely. I'm just sewing together using that same quarter inch. Throw this one together like so. I've like been having a total case of the Mondays all day, all, all, all day long. Okay. So then you don't have to press yet. I'm going to save pressing until the very end. I'm going to grab my, the next piece that I have waiting and ready to go. And I'm going to go ahead and clip that in place. So this is my fifth, fifth, I can say that word, fifth strip that I had set aside. I'm just going to clip it, clip the seams. So I like to clip it at the seams so that I know they're going to line up. And sometimes, so let me show you. Sometimes if, sometimes when you clip the seams, then there's a little bit of excess here. And I kind of, if you just wiggle, like it'll fall down in and kind of line up. Okay. Wiggle is a technical term. <laughs> Look it up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um. Okay. So it'll, it'll line itself up. And then I'm going to sew this one in place really quick. And we'll, then we'll add the last. or the back they're the same remember we're just going to open this up it's still gonna look so pretty guys look can you see how fun it is so far um and i'm just gonna double check now is my last chance to decide where the patterns go so just lay it out 
and I think this was meant to go at the top. Now I laid it out. So like that. Yep. Had all the fabrics line up well. I'm gonna clip these together. And I'm not taking the time to open them up like I showed you, but I want you to do them. I want you to. I wanted to get through as much as I could in the video. So I'm just kind of maybe throwing it together. Not exactly how I check real quick. Um Hi, Kathy. Ooh, fun, Tanya. Yeah, my maker sits right there, nice and pretty. <laughs> Has a front and center spot in my craft room. So let's throw this last one on, and then I'll show you. I'll show you the last steps, and then if you want to hang around and finish watching, you can, but you don't have to. So I'll show you how to finish it. How about that? <clears throat> And I'm gonna try and scoot back a little so you can see as much of it as possible. This is, a, it's sideways, but you can kind of see all the different prints um, and how it lines up. I just, I'm obsessed with all these prints, you guys. So now you will want to press, just like we did before, kind of press those seams in. Um, and then I want to show, and so you'll press, I'm going to show you the next step, um, in case you're not wanting to watch an eight hour video, so I've got my, um, let's see what we've got here, so I've got my two fusible fleeces, and I'm just going to line them up, and I don't, for this one, I don't want them to be all the way out to the edge, because I don't want to have, we're not going to finish it's going to be a raw edge and I don't want this hanging out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line it up so that I have about half of an inch around either side. Like so. If you can see, I've left myself a good chunk of space. Okay. And then we have just a little bit to trim off over here. So it's a little bit long. So I'm, again, I'm just going to flatten this out. Make sure that I'm lined up at about half of an inch. And this is easier if you lay it out on the floor and you're not doing it on a small table in front of a tiny camera. <laughs> so I'm just going to, so yours, yours should be more perfect than mine, okay? So then I'm just going to trim this up to about half of an inch. A little more or less is fine. Not a huge deal. So I kind of like to just fold it in half. Trim on my fold there. Okay, so that's about half of an inch that we've got left. And you're gonna do the same on the bottom <clears throat> with the, your other piece of, let me just uh, move this down a little bit. Okay, there we go. Your other piece of fleece, it might need to be trimmed a little bit more. I actually have a, let's see. I've got a piece already going here. And this is nice because it fuses so you can, you can piece it together a bit. So this little extra piece, don't have to open a whole new one. We're gonna line it up, and I'm gonna trim this one up too. Same, about half of an inch. I'm gonna make it look nicer, I promise. <laughs> Just trying to get it lined up. 
Okay. And then I'll have another piece here. Like so. And you'll just piece it all the way over. Okay. And then you'll iron it on. Then, so you'll iron it all on to this back piece. And then you're just going to lay the top piece right over top and stitch the same as we've done with the wrong sides together with this in the middle, stitch around the edge. Let me show you. Then, when it's, then you can go back through and um, you can go back through and add, do your shears. So here you can see we've just, I've just stitched it on the corners around here and I've used my shear and I've got the fleece inside. So this piece, this one's a little bit smaller. It's, it's sheared all the way. It's not even, it's not even hundred percent even, but I'm like totally fine with it. That's kind of the look we're looking for. So that's what I've done It's just, you go all the way around the edge and attach the two together. So here's what it'll look like. Let me pull this up like this. And the back is exactly, not exactly, but it's just the same. So that's, that's what it will look like finished. This one's, I'm sorry, I've been sitting in the closet, so it's all wrinkly. But you can go back through with your shears, or this is what it'll look like if you use a pre-cut that already had been sheared. Um, it gives it kind of a more finished feel. Okay. Um, so if you want, I'm going to finish this other one. Um, so Maria, um, to make a quilt where that's not raw like this is a whole nother can of worms. And, um, you wouldn't flip it out. You would quilt it and then add a binding. So, um, but I've got several tutorials. Um, I'll, I'll give you some links. We've got several tutorials on quilting and we even did some live videos so you can see if you're wanting to do a quilt. If you're wanting to do a baby blanket, um, I've got that where you flip it out and have the, don't have raw edges. I've got some tutorials for that as well. Um, but this one is just specifically about the um, the raw edges. So um, that's kind of a really long loaded question for another <laughs> time. Okay. Um, yes, I will definitely send you some links for those other things. And um, you can find, you can check out my YouTube channel. I've got some stuff on there. Um, I don't have everything that I've done on there yet. But um, yeah, so let's go ahead. If you're interested, if you're done, that's that's good. It was fun. Thanks for being here. And um, I'll be back in January. If not, I'm going to finish this. So up to you if you want to watch or not. It's your your choice. <laughs> um, let me, where were we at? I have to press this. So let me grab my towel. And I'm happy to ask. ask. That's not even the word I use. Answer. <laughs> I went like kind of Wisconsin there on you for a second, which I don't know where that came from. Um, you're, I'm happy to answer any questions if you have any about this one in particular. Um, and if you have one questions about other ones, you can send me a message and I'm happy to answer those. Um, but I'm not going to take the time between um, this video. I have a hard enough time sewing and talking at the same time let alone talking about a different project. <laughs> so yeah, my ironing board, I mean, my, this isn't even, it's still cool under this towel, just so you know. Not to say I haven't accidentally ironed over my pressing, over my cutting board one time, but. Okay. <clears throat> I just think this is so pretty. I'm excited to see the finished, the finished look of it.
And don't forget, I've done, there's a written tutorial for this that's linked in the description of this video if you're wanting to kind of jump ahead or get more clarification on the steps that I just mentioned but haven't shown yet. Um, you can head over there too and see the written tutorial with pictures of each step. <clears throat> These are super fun fabrics. I love them so much. Thanks, Elaine. Have a good Christmas and Happy New Year. Um, thanks for sticking around, guys. Naomi, Tina. Thanks, Gina. Have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Um, yeah, the threads, and I'm I'm going to definitely um, go back through, but <coughs> the threads will eventually stop once they hit the stitching that you've got. If you're going to do a raw one, you could also um, throw a zigzag stitch, use a zigzag stitch instead um, to keep it, to keep those threads even more contained, but they'll stop. But I kind of like the raw. And this kind of has, this fabric kind of has that boho kind of feel, which I feel like a frayed raw edge is definitely appropriate in that situation with the feel of the fabric. I mean the vibe, not the feel. You know what I mean. Um, Julie, glad to see you again. Um, I'm making a, um, what are we going to call it? I don't know, a rag quilt, kind of, <laughs> a quilt, a raw edge quilt. Um, hi, Deb. Hi, Debbie. We're coming, I, we, we're working on the back side right now, which is exactly the same as the front side. So if you're just coming in, um, you'll be able to catch up. Um, we've just pieced together four strips. And we made five rows. We're gonna now we're gonna put the rows together, and it's all raw edge. So we'll place the wrong sides together when we line everything up, which Gertrude thankfully reminded me of because I got a little confused <laughs> and forgot what I was doing for a second. Um, so, but luckily we caught it. So I'm just gonna put the wrong sides together. Pin my pin my seams together because that's where we want it to for sure meet. We can trim up anything on the edges, but the seams is where we want to have a nice point for corners. Okay. Take the next two and like this. I'm happy with that. And together. Um, I'm kind of tired today. I stayed up way too late. I I don't know why I didn't remember, but then last night all of a sudden at like 10 o'clock I remembered, oh, The Crown is on again. So I watched too many episodes of The Crown and I just didn't start till 10. So that's telling you I stayed up way too late. <laughs> 
kind of obsessed with that show. It's kind of fantastic. So I'm going to put this one aside. Um, good morning, Catherine. Yes, Julie, you should definitely make some. They're really fun. Ow, got myself on my own. Okay. <laughs> Just going to go ahead and sew these together. And then we'll have, we're almost got both front and back. So. right sides together is so ingrained that it's like you have to constantly be thinking wrong sides together wrong sides together <laughs> it's like it goes so against our sewing nature to leave it raw all right and um Thanks, Julie. That's so sweet. Um, oh my gosh. Tanya, so soon. Maybe you'll have a Christmas baby. Wouldn't that be fun? Um, and if you're just tuning in, this is Art Gallery Fabrics. It's Love Story is the name of the line by Maureen Cracknow. It's really, really pretty. And I've just cut um, 10 fat quarters into 49 inch squares. If you save, if you share this video, you can save it and I've done some tips for cutting, how to cut them easily into those squares at the beginning of the video. I'll go ahead and share it so you can find it later. Um, if you're more of a Pinterest person, you can go to the blog post listed in the description and pin it, and then I'm gonna throw all this, I'll throw this video into that um, post as well. The YouTube replay. So lots of options for you if you're wanting to save this and head back, or if you missed the beginning and you want to see what how we did it, how we started. Okay, so now we've got a row of three, we've got a row of two. Let's see how they line up prettily, beautifully. Um, okay, this right here is nice. And like I said, I'm a wing it, totally a wing it person. Um, but if you are concerned about your pattern and where they're gonna fall, I would lay it all out on, on the floor or a big table if you have a big table and get the patterns where you want them. Take a picture with your phone or, um, or you could get super technical and label them with a number or something. Um, but, I'm totally, totally fine with the randomness, as long as I don't have anything super close together um, touching of the same fabrics, then I'm okay with it. You could do um, some appliques, like applique onto these squares before you 
<laughs> put them together. That would be fun. You could make it um, like alphabet or counting. Make a little one from your your younger one. That would be fun. Animals would be nice. There's lots of options for this one. This would also be a good one for beginners and, and your kiddos if they're learning to sew. Um, there's just lots of straight lines and you don't even have to worry about hiding the seams. So. Starter quilt. It's not really a quilt, I guess. <laughs> it's more of a raw edge blanket, I guess. I'm not sure. So, um, good morning, Rose. Oh, I hope you get a new sewing machine too, Julie. That would be so fun. Okay, so let me just step back here. Here is what we've got so far. If you can see, this is the either the front or the back. It really doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna. Um, I'm going to press it, and I'm using, this is a really thick towel, so um, it's not, the heat doesn't go through, and I'm just going to, I mean, I'm not even, I'm not doing too much pressing, I'm just, this, the seam that we just created, I'm just going to kind of make sure that the fabric's not bunched there, and I'm not pressing the seam down, I'm just pressing up to the seam to make it, make sure it's flat, we don't have any anything bunching there. <clears throat> I think this is so, I love this fabric. I think it's so pretty. Okay. I think this one, this Aztec one right here is my favorite. Or the floral, or the lacy one, or the one with the, like the squares. <laughs> okay, all of them. I like them all, guys. I just like fabric, period, I guess. All fabric. All fabric is my favorite fabric. Okay, that's a lie. Not all fabric. Lots of fabric. I'm not gonna... I'm trying to be quick. All right. You get the idea. Pre press it all down, okay? Um, I'm gonna set this aside for just a minute. And then we'll bring back our um, I'm gonna bring back my front piece that we've already put the fleece onto, and I need another little piece. Let me just put piece somewhere. I guess I have to open up one more package of my fleece. And I guess I'm just gonna, I'll save this for another time. This extra bit. So two packages is just about perfect of this fleece. Um, just make sure that the shiny side, there's one side that has a little bit of a shine to it and that's the side that fuses. Make sure that that's down. That's where I want it. And then I'm just gonna trim it up. I'm leaving about half of an inch from the edge of the fleece to the fabric because we don't want it to stick out. Okay. And then I'm going to have to trim it up here too, I think, because it overlaps a bit. So right here, I'm just going to trim that up. That 
else there? It's not an exact. I'm not being super exact. You should be more exact than I am. Okay, there we go. Now, I'm just going to start at the bottom here. And I definitely recommend taking it to your ironing board. So you start at the bottom and press this on. And I'm just gonna kind of give it a light, make sure those seams aren't bunching up underneath when I press it on. Um, and I'm just going to, hold on, let me get my brain functioning. I'm gonna just use this as, um, protect it a little bit. I don't wanna use that, sorry. I'm just gonna grab a piece of, random fabric to protect. I don't want to iron right onto the fleece. So I'm just using this random piece of fabric. And then once we get it set a little bit, we'll turn it over and um, iron the other side down as well. I'm just trying to stay on my towel. Make sure I'm, yeah, it's not fusing to that, so. Fuse, no. Okay, that's not. Sorry, guys, I knew that wasn't going to work. All right, let's try this a different way. Now, sorry, it's pixely when I move around. I'm going to flip it and do it this way. So you can pin it in place if you want. I'm just making sure it's all lined up where I want it. This is a bit more forgiving than a normal quilt, which is nice. So the iron's better like this. So I'm just I'm gonna press the part that I'm gonna press, I'm just flattening it out a little bit. And then we can press it on. to this section. Okay. So make sure everything's still lying flat. <clears throat> Press that on. Scoot it down. Okay. Okay, okay. Let me just move this out of the way. Sorry, this part is the part that takes the longest. <laughs> I'm getting this fleece pressed on. But it'll make the next step really easy.
right. And I've got to the part where it's a little bit overlapped. That's okay. Just make sure it's all. Sorry, if you're leaving comments, I can't see them because I can't quite get to my computer. I will look in just a minute once I get this pressed on. <coughs> I'm working my way down here. Make sure it's still lined up under there. Everything's still good. Okay. See, randomly leaking water. Least favorite thing about my iron. <laughs> hey, when it does that. I don't need any steam. Please stop leaking. Okay. Almost there. Everything's still miraculously lined up nicely. Let's see. Um, this it's fusible fleece. Um, high loss. Um, iron on. It's not so it's heat and bond fusible fleece. It's not. Um, it's just the high loft. Like batting. I don't know if he used my iron. I feel like it's still just this is all left over. The water in here is still left over from the last time he used my iron. But I don't know. I guess I need to just get him his own iron. Scrap stuck. But he's in the military, so he has to iron uniforms sometimes. So I guess he's allowed to use it. It's just annoying. <laughs> Who irons clothes? Not me. I don't get it. Okay. <laughs> irons are for quilts, I thought. And that was it. Okay. I would definitely, if I were you, take a li little bit more time to make sure that fleece is really fused. I just want to finish so you guys can see what it looks like. And we're at an hour and a half almost, so. So really, I think on your own, taking your time, you could make this in about two hours. It's not too bad. Um, as far as gifts go. So then I'm just gonna lay this out. We've got our fleece for the most part attached. I'm gonna take the back or the front. It doesn't particularly matter. Um, it goes like this. And then I'm just gonna pin around. So it should line up pretty exactly. Um, so I'm gonna start here on this corner. And just cause it's a lot, I'm gonna use pins. Um, it's going to want to get stuck a little bit on the fleece because it's sticky. That's okay. I'm just going to start along this whole side here, pin it on this side, and then I'll be, I'll start, I'll move down. I'm just lining the edges up and hopefully our fleece is not sticking out if you've left yourself enough room 
which I think I have today. I'm just pinning that in place. Then I'll kind of adjust and move down and straighten everything out. <clears throat> And you just want to make sure it lies really nice and flat because this is the last step. We're not doing anything else. So um, there's not any quilting or anything that's going to help it lie down to get those wrinkles out. So you want to make sure you have those out Oops. so that you can line everything up. And look at that. It lines up. Amazing, I can talk and do this at the same time. That's not always the case. Okay. So now that I have, I've got this edge and that edge. I'm just going to kind of like, you know, move things to, towards this edge. And get everything flattened and lined up. And then pin it on. It's dropped one somewhere. Where did it go? Oh, here it is. Like I know I have two in my hand. Okay, we're almost all pinned up. This one's like super bent. I feel like everyone in this container is bent. Like, did they sell me their like throwaway bent pins? <laughs> There's so many. Okay, so now last chance before we sew it together, we're just gonna, I'm gonna flip it over and check um, and everything lines up here well. Everything on top is good. I know that it doesn't line up perfectly on the bottom. So now's your time. Just give it a little trim. Or if you just have one side that it doesn't line up, you can start sew on that side and then you can trim it at the end. That's your decision um, which way you want to go. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to just use that side as well. I don't want to, I changed my mind. <laughs> Sorry, wishy washy. Because um, I want it, the pins will be on the wrong side. So I'm just going to trim. Trim this up a little bit. It's kind of, it's just a little bit off right here for some reason. Probably because I pressed this one and I didn't press the other one. Which I don't recommend. You want to definitely press them all. It's trimming up that little bit extra. Okay. And now, last step. We're gonna finish it. Um, you can straight stitch or throw a zigzag stitch. Let me just make sure I don't have tons of comments. Um, oh, that'd be fun. Um, thanks, Tanya. Yeah, I will definitely be back in the new year. Um, I just wanna make sure that I'm giving you guys quality stuff and I'm just, um, I'm just a little tired, so, um, and holidays are crazy, so it's even a busier time. Um, so I'm just taking a tiny bit of time. It's only a couple weeks. I'm old now, you know, my birthday was yesterday, so I'm real old. <laughs> I'm just going to zigzag stitch all the way around. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm using about, leaning about a quarter of an inch. Myself. Go. Get a little back 
stitch up the come on there we go at the at, at the corner let's keep it in place that it's a little too bulky you could always start your walking foot in it seems to not be having a problem okay two more sides and we'll be done You could go back through if you want with your pinking shears and do the edges. Um, that's a personal choice. I'm I'm okay with the like I've said a couple times with the raw edge. Um, it's it's raw. That's what the whole quilt is raw. It's meant to be raw. It's kind of a raw. If you don't like that, you could also throw a binding on on this edge. Um, that's a personal preference. So you could use your shears. You could throw a binding on if you wanted. Um, but these are all going to be raw too. So that's, um, um, <clears throat> thanks Kirsten. Um, I used, so what I used was 10 fat quarters and I cut them into four nine inch squares each. Um, so you get four of each, um, pattern fabric, so four, four squares of each pattern of each fabric. Sorry. So here's what kind of the finished look is. And I mean, we've already got some fraying, which, I'll say it again. It might not be for you, but I like it. So <laughs> um, this one is meant to be a raw quilt. And then I'll show you one more time the finished one. If you do use your shears or use a pre-cut um, pack of pre-cuts, it, it will look like this. And you can see I haven't gone in and fixed it. The edges, I've left them raw intentionally, um, not necessarily even even. Um, so that's that. Um, I I might throw in um, Robin. I might throw in a few, just a few tiny, you know, stitches um, in the corners, just to keep it down. But I did catch a lot of fleece on the edges by using that zigzag stitch. I've caught the fleece in lots of places, so it's not gonna. It shouldn't um, lift. So that's also a personal 
there's lots of finishing things you could do. Um, nope, no binding on this one. I did zigzag on the edge of this quilt. Um, you could totally throw a binding on. It would be super easy to bind it um, if you want to bind it, if you don't like the raw edge. But I, I haven't, and I don't intend to on this one. So this is a, another one that I had made previously. It's the one actually in the blog post, um, and it's with the pre-cuts, and it doesn't have a binding either. So it's meant to be left raw. It's kind of a fun, kind of a fun, um, we've talked before about, you know, um, I think, what do we call them, therapy blankets? It just has a nice feel to it. Um, it gives you something to, to touch and um, feel when you do the, the raw edge. It just gives you something to, to finger or touch. So, yes, um, yes, the police package is here. You can do either. I did a zigzag just to catch that fleece. You could do a straight stitch as well. You could do a couple, like two rows of straight stitch if you wanted to make sure you catch that fleece and, and um, put it down, I think. You could, and you could also zigzag on these. That would be fine too. Um, here's the fleece, heat and bond fusible fleece. It's listed and I'll throw a link for you to the fleece as well. Um, that would be cute. Yarn ties would be super cute. You could do some embroidery floss. Um, to tie it. Yeah. So, all right, guys, this was a super long video. I am done until after Christmas. So I will, um, we'll start again. And, um, if you get a new sewing machine or if you know somebody who's getting a sewing machine and doesn't know how to sew, make sure you tell them about me because January is going to be all about learning to sew. Like we're going to pretend like we just pulled the machine. Sorry, it gets real glitchy when I move. We're going to pretend like we just pulled the machine out of the box and I'm going to go through every single little thing, um, you know, doing the bobbin and actually pulling the thread through on the bobbin and how to thread your machine and rotary cutting and Jean is going to go over the serger also from the very beginning. So if you have one of those and you're wanting to learn how to use it, um, we're going to just go back to basics. Um, we'll still have some fun projects. I plan to do um, a fun half square triangle quilt that we might work through doing um, with the beginner, um, while also incorporating the beginner stuff. And then, um, yeah, so we've got lots of fun stuff coming up in January and I hope you guys have wonderful holidays. Make sure you share this video so you can find it later. Um, go to that blog post in the description and pin it so you can find that. And I'll throw my YouTube video in the blog post later today. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys have a great holiday season and I'll see you in 2018. Bye.